All right, when we watch fights on our screens, there is something about it that makes our blood boil with adrenaline. Maybe it's because brawling is deeply rooted in our DNA. Or maybe, just maybe, there is some primal instinct that encompasses our attention. But when we think of crazed animals that love a good old-fashioned fight, yeah, sure, bears and lions come to mind. But there is one primate that is exceptional at violence, and it is the chimpanzee. These animals need no introduction when it comes to chaos. And you know what? They always find a way to shock us at how destructive they can be. You know, chimps have a bit of a reputation when it comes to temper. They're right up there with hippos. In fact, there have been many cases of chimpanzees violating humans. They hold grudges, so maybe it's best not to pick a fight with one. And they might have started uprising in movies, but what if we reverse time a bit and throw at it one of our battle-hardened human ancestors? And which one shall we choose? Well, how about a Neanderthal? They too crave a good old-fashioned brawl from time to time and are no slouches when it comes to dealing with violent animals. So what would happen if a chimpanzee fought a Neanderthal? Well, you clicked on the right video, because we'll be examining who would win in a fight between a chimpanzee and a Neanderthal. And you know what? We know both the chimpanzee and Neanderthal have a reputation for being absurdly strong for their size. But who is stronger? Well, I discussed that later on in the video, so you gotta stick around to hear that. But here's my question. If we revive a Neanderthal, yeah, you know, what do we do with it? Should we put it in a classroom with other students, or should we put it in a sanctuary? Well, let me know in the comments. But anyways, before we find out who wins in a fight, make sure y'all subscribe to my channel for more fascinating videos. Also, be sure to comment on what y'all think, because I'm actually kind of curious. The verdict wasn't really easy to make. But alright. Enough of the self-promo, let's establish some ground rules. Let's say this fight takes place on an open field, you know, to keep things neutral. So let's also assume we're talking about the alpha males from each group and they want to fight it out, so no running away. Alright, so could a chimpanzee beat an ancient human in a fight? Well, let's find out right now. Size and Physique the chimpanzee. It's perhaps the most infamous great ape. They are naturally jacked to say the least, I mean seriously. Have you seen this hairless one right here? That thing needs to enter a bodybuilding contest. Oh yeah, they also live in the rainforest and woodlands of Central Africa, but we know all the basic information, right? So let's skip all that and get to the interesting content. But anyways, why are chimpanzees so hyped up? Well, they have a bit of a manic temper and like to fight dirty. So perhaps humans like to view them as some sort of primal form of us. You know, ones that choose violence over peace. But perhaps its athletic ability is what makes it interesting. They are capable of climbing trees with ease, leaping great distances, and moving around their rough terrain like some sort of anime character. Like what? Look at this thing. Anyways, but let's not overhype them, cause trust me, there is a lot of that going around. You see, most of the chimps reported quote-unquote strength feats are based on terrible assumptions or by people in the early 1900s that straight up fabricate their event in order to sell a story. Yeah, so their whole inhuman strength has actually constantly been refuted by real testing. But more on that later. So just how large is a wild chimpanzee? Well, mature males weigh anywhere between 88 to 132 pounds and stand just under 5 feet tall. So yeah, perhaps they're not really known for their size Size, but rather their raw ferocity and strength. And speaking of strength, I know everyone gasses up these animals like it's some sort of villain who can ragdoll humans and toss around cars with ease, but that is far from the truth. You see, this research article right here says that a chimp's upper body muscles can output a force about 1.35 times greater than the average human of similar size. And emphasis on similar size. Oh yeah, by the way, their muscle composition is also about 67% fast twitch fibers. So with all that being said, a chimpanzee would have about the same strength as a welterweight fighter. But you know who's in the weight class of a welterweight fighter and is a lot stronger than an average human? Neanderthals. 
Ah, uh, yes, our ancient relatives were definitely a force to be reckoned with. They lived in Europe and some parts of Asia during the Ice Age. Uh, and they had to constantly defend their tribes against dangerous animals like cave lions and drag large carcasses and meat back to their tribe for sometimes miles on end. So yeah, they are also no slouches when it comes to power. But how does a Neanderthal compare to a chimpanzee? Well, first things first, they are a lot larger. The average male Neanderthal is estimated to weigh between 170 to 180 pounds and stood about 5 foot 6 inches. So yeah, if you do the math correctly, the Neanderthal weighs 50% more than a chimpanzee and has a height advantage. But perhaps their overall build and posture is what sets them apart. They have the same body layout as a modern human because, you know, they're part of the same genus as us. So how does a Neanderthal compare to us modern humans? humans, well, they are a lot more robust than the average human. Neanderthals had a stockier build. They supported a wider and barrel-shaped ribcage, a wider pelvis, thicker neck vertebrae, and supported shorter limbs. So what does that mean? Well, their whole bone structure was thicker and more adept at taking damage. And given that they had thicker jaws and teeth, it would actually be harder to knock them out and deal damage to them compared to a modern human. But here's the thing. They also had larger and straighter ribs, which actually implies that they had greater lung capacity and thus likely had more stamina. Okay, so how does the Neanderthal compare to its rival, the chimpanzee? Well, the chimp stands more or less quadrupedally when moving around. They don't really stand up too much, maybe when they're grabbing something or trying to intimidate, but being quadrupedal does have its pros and cons. You see, moving around on all fours could give the chimp more stability and more agility. But what are the cons? Well, its head is going to be exposed and pretty much at the forefront of any attack. Now, something like lions would want this because their elongated jaws are used to kill and incapacitate. Meanwhile, apes don't really use their jaws like big cats. The second con would be its limited reach. You see, the Neanderthal would have freer arms and legs, which would give it a nice reach advantage. Now, who can take more damage, a Neanderthal or a chimpanzee? Well, that's a great question. You know, I actually thought about this for a while, and uh, I think they both would kind of be equal in terms of durability, with the Neanderthal maybe slightly edging out the chimp because of its size. The Neanderthal has overall larger bones, however, its intricate spine and thinner skull could maybe make it more susceptible to hard forces. Now, even though chimpanzees are smaller by a large margin, they have a thicker skull and a more stout neck and skeletal region. But okay, okay, this might be looking pretty even right now. But how would a chimp and Neanderthal even fight each other? And what are the the weapons looking like and how would it be used in a brawl? Well, you gotta stick around to hear this because this is where it gets interesting. Weaponry and Fighting IQ Okay, now many of you have heard about the ruthless nature of a chimpanzee. They definitely like to play dirty. Chimpanzees are known to bite fingers and limbs, and confrontations with humans a lot of times end up with humans having bite wounds on their legs, hands, or arms. You know, people often have scratches or bruises when they get confronted by a chimp. But interestingly, chimps tend to avoid striking the torso and face, often because of the height difference and, well, poor leverage. And the leverage situation would would be exacerbated by the thicker chest of the Neanderthal. You know, it's gonna have a harder time accessing the head because there is simply more bone and muscle protruding out away from the head region. Now, I know a lot of y'all probably heard about chimpanzees ripping the face off a female scientist, but think about this. The scientist was not only elderly, she was quite small and obviously not battle-hardened or had any fighting experience. So of course the chimp would wreck her, but she didn't die. Oh yeah, by the way, that was a captive 200 pound chimpanzee and very much an outlying exception when it comes to size. Now a male battle-hardened Neanderthal, and we're assuming this is the alpha from its troop, would definitely not go down that easily. Like I said, even though chimps bring that crazy, wild, and often unpredictable behavior, the Neanderthal is habituated to wild, dangerous animals. While we see a chimpanzee as a hundred and 10 pound crazy psycho, a Neanderthal might see it as another rival or potentially food. You know, it looks at it up and down and isn't really all that shook. 
So, who fights better, a chimpanzee or a Neanderthal? Well, this is pretty interesting. Both the chimp and Neanderthal are not trained in fighting. Eh, surprise, surprise. But I personally feel like the Neanderthal would have more control and a unified fighting technique compared to a chimpanzee, if that kind of makes any sense. I guess another way to look at it is that the Neanderthal was a lot more intelligent and had better dexterity and control over its limb movements. There's a reason why human ancestors could throw objects very far and develop specific traditional dance dancing and brawling techniques. Essentially, we have more elasticity in our tendons, along with a more flexible and freely moving shoulder joint. And this translates into the Neanderthal having a more quote-unquote rangy arsenal when fighting. Oh yeah, one thing to note, and y'all gotta listen to this, Neanderthals know how to dispatch an animal. You know, something like twisting the neck of a deer, or subdue an animal's movements. After all, they're often wearing animal hide. And where do you think that came from? Anyways, Neanderthals think inside of its environment. Its first instinct would to weaponize. You know, grab something like a rock. But would it even have enough time to weaponize? Chimpanzees are pretty manic and explosive creatures. So how do chimpanzees fight? Well, they're definitely bringing ferocity to the table. When you see chimps fight, they have more of a quote-unquote three-dimensional way of brawling. They definitely do not stay stagnant, unlike what humans kinda do. They leap. They dive in, they jump around. But how are they hitting? Well, they more or less just kinda slap and flail their arms around. They also like to leap at their opponents to catch them off guard. And as I mentioned earlier, chimps sometimes bite when in range. An emphasis in range. You see, a chimpanzee's mouth is very close and pressed against their face. Basically kinda like a human. And thus, when it wants to bite, it has to get really close in order to do so. Again, it would have about the same bite range as a human. But how effective is a chimp's bite? Well, they're not really that effective. Their teeth, although daunting, are just that, daunting. Their dentistry is aimed towards an herbivorous diet, and their canine teeth are rather poor when resisting stress. So essentially, while its bite may hurt, it's not going to be the end-all be-all when determining a verdict. And just to prove it, when people get mauled by chimpanzees, they basically almost always survive. In fact, the only really chimpanzee victims are usually infants. But chimpanzees are still rather strong and like to fight dirty. They will scratch, they will bite when given the opportunity, and yes, they would wreck the average human. But we're not talking about the average human here. We're referencing a battle-hardened Neanderthal. So anyways, how would a Neanderthal fight a chimpanzee? Well, you would definitely try to keep it at range with its longer and more dexterous arms. But the chimpanzee has raw ferocity on its side. It's going to close that distance fast and jump on him. And if the chimp decides to rush him, because believe me, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, that's when the fight gets interesting. So, who would win between these two? Well, I think it's about time we determine a verdict. Alright, we have our stats. So, who would win between a chimpanzee and a Neanderthal? Uh, this would definitely be a vicious brawl. But assuming we take the alphas from each group, I think the Neanderthal would win with very high difficulty. Hey, I never said it would be an easy fight, but we gotta take into account the huge size difference. The Neanderthal is 50% larger than the chimpanzee, and has a height advantage. This, in turn, would give the Neanderthal not only a larger reach, but also a leverage advantage given its upright-ish posture. Now, in my opinion, I think the Neanderthal would be more crouchy when trying to fight the chimp, you know, somewhere kind of between standing up in a wrestling position. But I digress. The Neanderthal's more robust build and battle-hardened body would likely incur fewer injuries when getting mauled by the chimp compared to us. As proven by multiple instances, chimpanzees mainly target the limbs and not the face or torso given our unique posture. And here's the thing not to forget, Neanderthals are habituated to dangerous wild animals, so seeing a chimpanzee wouldn't really scare it all too much. You know, he looks at it up and down and says, screw it, I'm taking my chances. Anyways, what would happen if they fought? Well, I see the chimpanzee rushing in and leaping at the Neanderthal, and it might stammer him, but eventually I think the Neanderthal would get its arms around the chimp and slam it to the ground. Thus, this begs the question, how many times could the chimpanzee be thrown? Rowan before it gets injured and maybe a couple times, that's my guess. Remember, this takes place in a field, so the ground is pretty hard and not a padded surface 
like an MMA ring. So yeah, slamming the chimp on the ground would disorient it and possibly even stun it. During this time where the chimpanzee is trying to get up, the Neanderthal could just, you know, continue the fight and keep bashing on the chimp, or maybe it finds a rock and beats the chimp with it, but that's if it gets enough time. Remember, an alpha Neanderthal knows how to dispatch an animal, thus it would kind of know where and how to target when it wants something dead. Okay, now that's not the only win condition. You see, the chimp would actually be pretty hard to catch, and there there's an X factor where the chimpanzee fights more kind of 3D and is more agile, but I think it's only a matter of time before the Neanderthal adapts and slams it or pins it to the ground. You see, chimpanzees don't dodge, they don't weave, they more or less just charge in. And something to take note of is that the longer the fight progresses, it's going to be more than Neanderthal's favor. This is because they have superior endurance given their morphology and would likely adapt to the situation better given their intelligence. So basically one of the only win conditions for the chimp is to finish the fight early and destroy the Neanderthal pretty early on in the fight, which I don't really see as too much of a viable option. Now, I'm definitely saying this is going to be a hard fight for the both of them, but I think the Neanderthal has the proper attributes to actually end the fight. But how would a Neanderthal, or a chimpanzee for that matter, compare to Mike Tyson? Who wins? Well, you can watch that video I have on the screen.